Welcome to week five of your professional practices course. So far, we have covered unit four and unit 4A, chapters one and two. And last week, we did chapter three, but Ontario regulation uh, 212, that is gaseous fuels. So we're going to finish chapter three today, or this week rather. And we are going to uh, have an assignment, your weekly assignment about chapter three, but Ontario regulation 215 that is called fuel industry certificates regulation. All right. And uh, in this regulation, we're going to study the scope of work that you're allowed to do when you have your G3 license and uh, hopefully when you have your G2 and of course in the near future G1. I hope that everybody is planning on having their G1 license eventually. So just a reminder, last week we did uh, what we call the gaseous fuels regulation, all right? And this week we're going to do fuel industry certificates regulation. Excellent. A reminder again that you are supposed to be able to search the Technical Standards and Safety Act itself, those four or rather five words, and you're supposed to be able to find. So use any search engine you like on any web browser you like. Um, find the Technical Standards and Safety Act. Make sure that it is off Ontario because other provinces also have uh, TSSA. And then under the Act, um, you're going to find the uh, regulations. And today we're going to talk about the fuel industry certificates. For fuel industry certificates, you're, uh, if, if you scroll down this page on uh, your web browser, you're going to find the contents of this regulation. Obviously, every legal document should start with some kind of... Um, definitions or interpretations and then if you look at section three you're going to find the certificates it's a long list of certificates that are issued by the technical standards and safety authority our scope for today is going to be our g1 g2 g3 that's going to be our scope of today so why don't we delve right in and talk about your G3 certificate. So if you scroll down more on the same page, you're going to find the G3 certificate. And let's talk about the scope of work on this one. All right. So a person who is the holder of a G certificate may, right? I'm going to highlight this under the general supervision okay of a person who is a certificate holder or uh, of one of those three certificates this is very important the general supervision okay so under the general supervision of a g1 g2 or a d a certificate all right carry out the following functions on a propane or natural gas appliance that fall within the scope of the supervising certificate holder certificate. So you can do these four things when under general supervision of a G1 or a G2 or a DA certificate holder. Whatever from these four things that falls under their uh, uh, certificate holders um, scope of work okay but only if the person has demonstrated the essential skills required to perform such work and has had that experience documented and signed off by the supervising certificate holder in a form as set out and published by the director now this part you don't need to worry about as far as taking care of this is taken care of the employer this is not something you 
are supposed to worry about. However, that doesn't mean that you don't need to know about it. Your, your employer is supposed to take care of this 100%. Okay, so what are the tasks that you can do under general supervision of a G1 or a G2 or a DDA certificate? Let's have a look. Number one, you can install, test, activate or purge gas piping or tubing that is less than two and a half inches in diameter. All right. So last week you started doing your gas piping project in the lab and you're building the gas pipe. You uh, Towards the end, you're going to add tubing to it, copper tubing to it. So basically you're doing an installation. You are going to test, meaning pressure test. You're going to activate, meaning turn the valve on or off, or purge, meaning remove whatever is in the gas piping. By the way, we are going to study purging uh, in week five in your piping and tubing systems course. Now, why does it say less than uh, two and a half inches in diameter? Why suddenly less than two and a half inches in diameter? Well, because I, and I, I just remind you, I've talked about this several times in the class, because once a gas piping is two and a half inches or larger in diameter, it has to be welded. And for welding, you need a welding license. You can't just go and weld gas piping without a license. Okay. All right. So we're taking care of that. And here is a small reminder for us uh, that instead of, uh, or in, in addition to piping or tubing, uh, you're also supposed to do the components in a piping or tubing system. Obviously con components can be, uh, I would say, maybe a gas valve, uh, fittings maybe are considered components, or it could be uh, fixing uh, for pipe stay, for example, uh, things that affix uh, a piping uh, or section of a piping and tubing to a wall or a ceiling or a floor, stuff like that. However, the most important thing is that you can work on that downstream of natural gas meter or propane service valve up to an appliance control valve, including the com completion of the pressure test tag. Okay, so just a reminder, you shall not work on a gas meter. Okay, for to do that, you need certain uh, authorization that doesn't fall under G1, G2 or G or uh, DA certificates uh, or G3, obviously, uh, to touch and work on uh, gas meters, obviously you can touch with your hand. <laughs> what I'm saying is to work on a gas meter uh, or a, uh, we call that part where there is the gas meter and the regulator at the supply, at the beginning uh, supplying point of a gas uh, um, uh, piping or tubing system. We call that service. And, and, and the distributors usually um, have the authority to work on those. Enbridge is a distributor or whoever is your propane uh, supplier is called a distributor there. So, but you should be able to do installation, test, activation and purging. And you are going to be trained on that in the lab. All right. That was the first one done. The second one is reactivate a previously installed or converted appliance. So you can reactivate an appliance, meaning you cannot initially activate an appliance when it has not been working or activated. You can reactivate. And that's something we're going to train you on in the lab in the last two weeks or even three weeks if needed um, of, of your course here. Right. And then uh, you can clean and lubricate an appliance that is self-explanatory. Not all appliances require uh, lubrication. Uh, I think that's rather an older version of saying lubricate. It could, uh, if an appliance has belts, 
So if the fan is belt driven, then definitely you will need to lubricate. Some of the some even some of the Venter motors older versions require lubrication. I don't think um, those exist anymore. But anyway, uh, if it is required, you are allowed to do that. Number four. Uh, clean, remove, or replace a vent connector, venting, or draft control devices. You're going to learn the meaning of uh, vent connector, venting, or draft control devices. I, I realize you don't know what they mean yet, but you're going to learn about those uh, in your course that is called, uh, in this course, obviously, that is uh, that is called JST 1003 introduction to gas appliances and uh, in the lab um, specifically under unit 9 uh, you're going to learn about those so you can clean them remove them or replace them see it doesn't say anything about installation so you cannot install something that wasn't there in terms of vent connector or venting or draft control device so you can take a defective draft control device away and replace it but you're not you're not supposed to initially install it if it didn't exist in the first place okay i hope that's uh, uh something you understand just make sure that you know that these four things are connected to the uh, idea of under the general supervision so these four things you can do under the general supervision let's not forget that that's very important so what else you can do well here it's not about what you can but it's what about your you cannot a person referred to in subsection one shall not perform the initial activation of a new appliance or a newly converted appliance. I think I mentioned this. So if you just look at this here, which says reactivation, uh, remember that you cannot initially, you cannot initially activate a new appliance or a newly converted appliance. Just remember that you cannot do that. All right. Um, and then there is a third rule, which is revoked good for us less to uh, remember and then number four which is more interesting it says a person who is the holder of a g3 certificate may under the direct supervision of a person who is the holder of any of these licenses carry out any of the functions that fall within the scope of the supervising certificate holder so if a g1 license holder uh, can work on a, an appliance that is 10 million BTUs, you can too, but only under the direct supervision, okay? Only under the direct supervision, as opposed to under the general supervision, this is under the direct supervision, okay? Under the general supervision, you can do all of those four things. Under the direct supervision, you can do anything that the certificate holder who is supervising you can do. I hope this is um, clean and uh, <laughs> clear as mud and you can understand, uh, you know, uh, how to read this. It is important to remember uh, to understand how to read this. All right, so I'm going to take up the first question here. Can a G3 license holder, right? Can a G3 license holder under the direct supervision, install gas piping uh, to a 450 CFH boiler. Now, sometimes TSSA will throw at you things like this. What, what the hell is CFH? CFH stands for cubic feet per hour. Right? That's what it stands for now it is equal to saying btus per hour actually sorry thousands of btus per hour that's the equivalent to it because as i explained in the in the classroom one cubic foot of natural gas will give you 1000 BTUs 
per hour. So 450 cubic feet of natural gas per hour is going to give you what? It's going to give you X and X here is a, a cross multiplication. So 450 multiplied by 1000 divided by one. That's 450,000 BTUs per hour. That's what it is. Okay. So can a G3 license holder uh, under direct supervision, see, remember direct supervision. So it's, it's right here under the direct supervision of a person who is the holder of a G1 certificate carry out any of the functions so it comes down to whether a g1 g2 or a g or a da can uh, do this install gas piping to a 450,000 btu per hour boiler right well can they or can they not let's have a look at the g2 certificate in the G2 certificate, a person who is a holder of a G2 certificate may install, inspect, alter, purge, activate, repair, service, or remove a natural gas or propane appliance that has an input of 400,000 BTUs or less. Uh-oh. So this is 400,000 BTUs or less. What did we have here? We had 450,000 BTUs per hour. So a G2 license holder cannot do it. In other words... Under the direct supervision, a G3 license holder cannot do that job under the G2. Let's see G1. Let's see if a G1 license holder can do it. A G1 certificate, a person who is the holder of a G1 license uh, certificate may install and do all that. Okay. Of any BTU input. You see how beautiful that is? of any btu input i think that's i don't like that line i'm going to remove that line of any btu input don't you like that i honestly think that is the best license to have so obviously if you are under if you're a g3 license holder and under direct supervision of a g1 license holder you can do this. So the answer is yes.